Hey, welcome to the clinic, a safe place for born again Christians who absolutely love God, but are a little under the weather. I'm April, your host, and I'm glad that you're here. It's time to get well. Hey y'all, welcome back to the clinic. It is super late and I have a cup of tea. I've got my notes and for real, for real y'all, we're just about to talk. I have been sitting on this for almost a week trying to find the right right time to record. And I promise you, everything has happened under the sun that has prevented me from being able to do this. So I got some notes written down. I like to try to type it. So I have like a, my Chromebook to the left. Then I've got the MacBook. But we're just going to, I'm just, we're just going to talk. No pressure. None of that. We're just going to have a conversation. And I might, you might hear a little pause with me sipping my tea. And you might hear a little rustle of paper. But hey, as long as the Lord is heard. As long as we are looking to the Holy Spirit, as long as our eyes are fixed on Jesus, it doesn't matter what I'm Hello. doing over here, as long as he has captivated our attention. So that's all I ask. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of prayer because I ain't going to be in here long because I don't want y'all to be like, dang, this thing is an hour long. So, <laughs> but they say podcasts, you know, they can be a little long because I guess that's the nature of a podcast, but. You know, you can always throw it on and cook, clean, do whatever, and just pause, rewind. It's so awesome. Technology is just awesome. But anyway, let me me start off with a little prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, your son, your beautiful son, the Savior, the Son of God, the Lamb that was slain, my heart, my, the love of my life, the one that keeps me, my best friend, my counselor, Lord, I acknowledge you this evening. We acknowledge you this evening. You are the center. You are the focus. You are the main attraction always and forever. Please have your way through this podcast and through this segment this evening. Holy Spirit, show up and speak through me. Take full control over this vessel, over my mouth, over my thoughts, over the meditations of my heart, God. And I ask that what you want spoken, what you want said, will impact, change, transform, open up, enlighten the person on the other side of this computer listening. I pray for blessings for them and myself. I pray for protection. And I just thank you, God, for what you are doing here through this podcast among millions, God. I thank you, Lord, for empowering us. I thank you for not leaving us victims, but giving us your name, giving us um, your authority, giving us the victory that we didn't work for. And so I just thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So recap, last podcast, if I can remember, we talked about, oh, just a little bit about what the clinic is and who it's for, um, who it's uh, a little bit of background. So just a small reminder, remember that the clinic is a safe place. It is a place for born-again Christians or saved Christians. Pretty much anybody that has given their life to Jesus Christ and has acknowledged him as the the way, the truth, and the life to get to the Father. And uh, he died on the cross for all our sins, recognizing that they need a Savior. You are born again. That's you. Um, It's also for those that love Jesus but are a little under the weather. And I explained that under the weather means that, you know, you're struggling with some things in your walk. Not necessarily willful sin, but just trauma, um, uh, residue from hurtful relationships, childhood. um, and, And the Lord wants through this podcast to make crooked places straight. He wants to tear down negative uh, responses and reactions to life, to um, the thing, the circumstances that happen in our lives, our trials, our tribulations. He wants to change how we look at ourselves, how we identify ourselves, how we love ourselves, and to see him 
in spirit and in truth and so many things in between. So if that's you, you're in the right place. You're in a safe place. No judge zone, no condemnation. Um, everything that I'm talking about are things that I have that God has brought me out of and still teaching me in, and uh, building on or things that I'm actually probably in different ways going through with you. But either way, you're not listening to somebody that is just talking about what someone else has gone through. Um, I'm a witness. Okay, so tonight, though, we're going to talk about the prerequisites for the transformation that we want to have a renew renewed mind. And what we're going to call this segment is the pre-op appointment. So, you know, when you go to the doctor before they actually do surgery, before they actually start cutting and all that, they do a pre-op. They, they come and they ask questions and they prep you for the surgery. They explain to you what they're going to do. They may have to take blood work to make sure that you have the right levels before they operate. So that's what this is today. There's, there's some prerequisites um, before we can really get into the meat and potatoes that God has put on my heart to share with you. And I believe it is five things. Um, let me scroll up. Oh, let's see here. Give me a second, y'all. And you know, while I'm scrolling, I'm going to sip on my tea. I don't know if y'all like me, but I'll sip on something and, and get sidetracked. Go put in the microwave. Forget it's in the microwave. Go... Go to the microwave, reheat it again, and then while it's reheating, go get distracted again. Then f forget about it. I don't. It's a whole terrible cycle. And you know, my mama used to do the same thing. It, I mean, I used to laugh in the background, like, <laughs> and now I do it. You know. Okay. Here we go. Um, my apostle said in church a couple Sundays ago, and I was talking to him. I was asking about having a renewed mind. You know, I don't know about y'all, but I've heard so many times in church and been quoted, renew your mind. Do not be conformed to the world, but renew your mind. You know, and you hear it and you can just quote it, but nobody actually really said, okay, in April, and this is how you renew your mind. And this is the importance of renewing your mind. This is why you need to renew your mind. Why does God tell us to renew our minds? So the first thing he said to me, well, before you can actually have a renewed mind, you have to have a made up mind. And that resonated with me because like anything in life, you have to have a made up mind. You have got to make a decision and a choice to pursue something, to do something. You have to want it. That is the first step to anything is to have a made up mind. The second thing is be honest. Be honest about where you are and what you're struggling with, because God already knows anyway. I mean, and if you're here, I believe there are no coincidences in Jesus that he led you to this podcast. So just be honest with him. He already knows. He just needs you to be honest about you. So then you guys can be on agreement so we can be on agreement and then we can get what we need. Right. The third thing is believe. And this is a really this is a big one. Believe. That the word of God is enough and is more than a flat book. Believe that it is living. You know the scripture that says it is living and sharper than any double-edged sword. The scripture says in Hebrews 4 and 12, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. And it is a discerner. Of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Thoughts and intentions are always changing. Are they not? So only something living can discern. I can't read. Um, Ramona had a very bad day. And it discerned my thoughts and emotions. No matter how many times I read that Ramona had a very bad day. I'm going to get the same message, the same narrative in that story. But the Bible is, is not like any book that we will ever read. It is a living, breathing, um, gathering of God-breathed, inspired 
scriptures from heaven. So I really want to emphasize, because a lot of us think that the Bible, and, and not purposely, you know, that, oh, it's just a book. It's just a bunch of stories, you know, about some people that I don't really, I don't look like, I can't really connect with. But trust me, this Bible is living. It is sharper than a double-edged sword. I am a witness to that. Um, actually, I actually have two examples I can share a couple times, twice in deliverance sessions. Um, I have seen it done and then I did it where someone took the Bible and they put it on the person and they literally jumped like they were being electrocuted. I mean, I was amazed. I'm looking at this with my own eyes. It was like fire just by the touch of the book to their skin. Think about that. Think about that now. It wasn't even open and the words were coming out of our mouths. But the very touch of the book against her body, against his body, there was a reaction. That's how powerful that is. Another, situ another time, I was the one that actually did it. I felt the Lord say, get the Bible. And I experienced that myself like, like a shocking and that's just with, like I said, not even speaking the words in the Bible. So I want to ask you a question too, because um, this is another, you know, not all of us feel or think this way, what I'm about to say, but history, let's talk about history. You and I, and whoever's listening, did not live during the time of slavery. We didn't live during the time when Abraham Lincoln was president. But we believe in what we learned in school and history that these things actually happened. These people actually existed. These events actually took place. But you and I were not physically there. We did not uh, witness it with our own eyes. But yet we believe that those things happen. So... If we can believe that, why, why do we not believe that the things in the Bible or the power of the word is real? How is it that we can believe wholeheartedly in other things, but when it comes to the things of the spirit, it's not as fluid? Those are things that we need to ask ourselves. Why is that? That's backwards, isn't it? Just food for thought. Something to think about. Another example would be love. Okay, so we can't tangibly touch love. We can't take love and stuff it in a bottle, seal it up. But what we feel, if you're a mother, as an example, the moment that I knew I was pregnant, I was overwhelmed by this powerful emotion that I had never experienced before. It was so powerful, it scared me. I had never felt this way about anyone or anything in my entire life. But yet I couldn't actually take that feeling that was so powerful and still is and touch it and see it or taste it. But that very emotion, I promise you, would be my motivation to die for my child. For an invisible force that I can't see, touch, or taste, but I would die behind it for my children. I sure would. So no one in this world can tell me that love is not real because I can't see it, because I can't touch it, because I can't taste it, because I can't feel it. And I know you all can relate to that. It's the same with the things of the spirit. I may not be able to see them. I may not be able to touch them, but they are more real than this moment right now than anything. There's nothing more real, nothing more powerful than the word of God. And when it is applied, it can change your life. I am a witness. Okay, so we're still talking about believing though, y'all. We're still talking about believing. 
So there is power in believing in the promises that God has said is ours. And those promises are the scriptures. Those scriptures are the words that do not return to him void, but they do the thing that he set it out to do. That is our guarantee. We can take it to the bank that what God has written, what he has allowed to be recorded, what he has said is ours. Those are the promises of God for you and I. But in order for them to be activated in our lives, we must believe. Because this this is so key because what he has said about you and I is, is in the word. And that means that we have to totally abandon every other label and title that has been given to us by our mothers, by our fathers, by life. However, it was given to you and I, it must be abandoned. It must be abandoned and it must be replaced with what he has said, what the scriptures say about who we are. And we must believe it for the change to happen. Hope I'm making sense so far, y'all. As a matter of fact, y'all, let, let's take a second. We're going to talk to the enemy right quick. Hold on, let me scroll. Because see, I wrote this. Hold on a second. Mm -hmm. This is a good time to tell the enemy. Sorry if y'all hear all that clicking in the back. Okay. I want you to repeat after me, okay? I speak to every foul, lying spirit that has convinced me that I am not worthy, unintelligent, inferior, ugly, and embarrassing through the mouths of people that didn't love me. In the name of Jesus, today I reject, renounce, and come out of agreement with you and your lies. I cast down every lie that is active in my life in Jesus' mighty name. I destroy every form of deception and I take full authority over every lie that has become my Bible I break it in Jesus' name. Jesus, please forgive me for replacing your words with the enemy's lies. Forgive me for choosing him over you. Holy Spirit, I welcome you and I ask you to replace every lie with the truth about me. From the way I look, my body, my voice, my face shape, my legs, my eyes, my hair, my intelligence, my worthiness, my everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hey, 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 we about to be free. Don't make me sing in the mic. We about to be free. Don't make me sing in the mic. Hey. Okay, anyway, we're back. <laughs> All right, so moving on. Because y'all got to understand. I need you to understand and grasp this right now. That you will have to contend, fight crawl battle to believe why because the enemy knows the danger it is to his whole operation if you believe in the right things the truth the words that jesus has said and is still saying he needs no convincing that what god has said is 100 and while we are lukewarm he is swarming in baby he is taking full advantage and it is all a part of his plan. If you believe, I'm telling y'all, from, 
from I'm telling you from experience because I was not always here. I lived in a place of brokenness. I lived in a place of shame. I lived in a place of inferiority and compa- and comparison constantly tormented and harassed I was never ever free in my mind I was always tied down with thoughts either from my past of condemnation I mean I shouldn't have did this I should have did that my family don't this and my family God set me free but he showed me I need you to get in my word so I can be the mirror and I need to heal you where you have been bruised. So I am telling y'all, if you believe in what Jesus has said, it will change the trajectory of your life. I promise you, you won't be the same. You can't be the same. It's impossible. All right. So believing that's the third thing. I'm sorry. Second thing is believing the third thing is to value his word in him. This one, I think we're going to have to talk about in a different podcast, y'all, because this alone is a whole lot. But let's go back to two real quick. Before I get into valuing his word in him, there are a few more things I want to talk about um, concerning believing. Because this is just like a perm, y'all. This is the activator. This is the activator. Okay? All right, so let's talk a little bit more more. I can't even talk. Let's talk a little bit more about believing. So, choosing to believe is a choice, y'all. Believing is what activates faith. Faith is a noun. It's a thing. A conviction of truth. And what is the truth? The word of God. Okay, y'all following me? All right, I'm gonna say it one more time. Choosing to believe is a choice. Believing is what activates faith. Faith is a noun. It's a thing, a conviction of truth. What is the truth? The word of God. G, uh, it's the word of God, believing the word of God Jesus and all that comes with believing in him. Okay, here's an here's an example, y'all. Okay, Kool-Aid. Let's talk about some Kool-Aid, all right? Let's say that I have um I have the packet, but I don't have water, a pitcher, sugar, or a glass. When I open that packet, pour in the sugar and stir it up, now I have something to consume. I have something now I can drink. But before, I just had ingredients. The packet of Kool-Aid by itself, without the water, without the pitcher to pour it in, without the sugar to sweeten it, and without the glass to drink it out of, it's just a pack of Kool-Aid. But when I put those things together, I have something I can consume. And it's the same thing with believing and your faith and the word of God becoming to life in your life. Y'all feel what I'm saying? Okay, let's pray one more time. Actually, wait a minute. Before we pray, let's talk a little bit more, okay? Let's talk about this. If you do not believe, nothing will change or take root in your life. And this is with anything. If you don't believe in what you are doing, if you don't believe in what you're called to do, if you don't believe in if you're not passionate and rooted and invested, the likelihood of it being successful is very, very slim. I mean, we know that just from the natural, right? And the natural most times is a reflection of the spiritual anyway. So if we do not believe, nothing will change or take root in our lives. Knowledge will be hindered from becoming revelation in our lives. Your progress of total freedom and wholeness is hinged on you making the choice to believe. Make the choice to believe in the word of God. Make the choice 
to look at your Bible differently. Make the choice to inhale the scriptures and know that when you open that book, that it is a discerner. That's why you hear people say, man, I read that scripture one day and I got this. And then the next day it, or the ne later on in my life, other situations, uh, it, it resonated with me in this way because it's living. I just had to sip my tea on that one. <laughs> but it's the truth. Okay, so here we go. Let's pray, y'all. Let's pause right here for a second. Let's, let's pray. Let's touch and agree. There's a whole lot of, lot of power in this touching and agreeing. We're going to do this a lot. Okay, ready? Repeat after me again. Jesus, today and every minute and second thereafter, I choose to believe in your word. I choose to believe in your promises. I will fight to believe. Help me to believe. And help me with any unbelief. I renounce unbelief. I reject unbelief. And I come out of agreement with unbelief. I seal this with the blood of Jesus. I guess that wasn't really a prayer. More of like a declaration. But amen anyhow. Hallelujah. So... If you want to know what you believe, take a look at yourself because you mirror what you believe. And we don't want to give surface level consent. We don't want head knowledge. We don't have time for that just to be able to quote scripture and, you know, I can tell you where this is in the Bible. We don't, we don't want that. We want revelation from the Holy Spirit because it can only come from him because revelation is what changes us. The enemy doesn't want that. So let there be nothing to stop the Holy Spirit from bringing this to life to you and in you. Okay? Um, I think we're going to stop there. We'll stop there. And then the next podcast, I'm going to talk about valuing him and trusting him. I don't want to keep us on too long. But I hope that what I shared with you all this evening was um, helpful. I hope that it made you aware of maybe doing some of the things I mentioned and changing that. Because you, you've got a gold mine wherever you have your Bible stored on your phone. You've got a gold mine. And I'm talking to myself too, um, not to mistreat the word, word of God, not to take it for granted and um, open it up and apply it to my life as well more and more because there's so much in there that we need we need so you guys have a wonderful evening and I will be posting another podcast soon I pray that the Holy Spirit seal and and whatever he's highlighted to you it be um, engraved in your heart and your mind and you eat and meditate on it um, if you need anything you can reach me via email the clinic with april at gmail.com you can find us on facebook and uh, i'm here for you i love you and we'll talk soon okay bye <laughs>